The government is banking on the tourism industry as one of the key drivers of our economy. The idea is outlined and supported in PNG Vision 2050 and the Medium Term Development Plan 2011 to 2015. I'm Festus Maigna. Hello and welcome to another edition of Business PNG. In this program, we'll showcase the growing hospitality industry and the booming restaurant business. The emergence of hotels, motels, guest houses and restaurants has skyrocketed in the last couple of years, more evident in the nation's capital. And many of these investors are rolling out their businesses to other parts of the country. One such investor is the Ribbon and Hinjao group of companies, better known for their catchy phrase, RH Hypermart, where your kina buys more. Well, RH is now investing over 300 million kina in the establishment of a five-star hotel right next to the capital city's star attraction, Vision City. The facility, once completed, will redefine the meaning of five-star accommodation. It will be the epitome of the luxury in the nation's capital. The sound economic growth experienced in Papua New Guinea over the last decade has triggered the emergence of new businesses. One such sector being tapped into is the tourism and hospitality industry. It's a risk taken by many of these investors, knowing very well the challenges involved in operating a business here. And for some of these investors, one would have never thought they'd take an interest in the industry. The Ribunan Hijau group of companies has expanded from a small forestry company operating since 1989, diversifying into other sectors of the economy like agriculture, transport, resources and media. And that's not all. The RH group of companies is investing heavily in Papua New Guinea. First, the establishment of the mega city mall, Vision City, and now the Rafi Hotel and Suites that's expected to beef up competition in the hotel industry. The company will make its mark on the hospitality scene with the construction of a five-star hotel worth some 380 million kina. This is part of the one billion kina venture that started from the establishment of Vision City and solidifies the company's long-term investment strategy in the country. And the government has also ensured that investments such as the Renfri Hotel and the Vision City are possible. Uh, this kind of confidence uh, uh, in this kind of investment def definitely demonstrate that uh, we have a lot of confidence, you know, uh, in the growth story of PNG. You know, there will be uh, uh, what you call uh, bigger demands uh, for accommodation, especially uh, those. Uh, that uh, we, we foresee that we, we are bringing new uh, uh, standards uh, to PNG. Yes, uh, we, we are very positive uh, and uh, we believe that the government uh, stability and the government efforts uh, and certainly the growth story uh, uh, in PNG you know, is, uh, is something that has uh, 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 give, give us this confidence to, to invest in this, uh, this kind of uh, investment. Prime Minister Peter O'Neill, along with other dignitaries, performed a groundbreaking ceremony recently, signalling the development of yet another facility to meet world-class accommodation needs for Papua New Guineans, the ever-growing business community and tourists. Let me extend our gratitude uh, and uh, uh, gratitude to the RX Group for investing and having the confidence uh, in the uh, economy and the country to make uh, such a substantial investment commitment in the construction of this, this hotel. The Raintree Hotel and Suites will put a new face on the market and for those interested in a luxury atmosphere, well, this is one to look out for. It will be the first resort-style hotel in the city and the newest tourist attraction, providing a relaxing getaway for people from all over the country, the Pacific and travelers from overseas. This is a, can, can be said a supplement uh, to what the LNG has done for PNG in terms of uh, the growth story, like I said uh, earlier. You know, because the, the a LNG project definitely has created uh, a huge demand, you know, for uh, uh, accommodation space, you know, for, for you know, bringing in uh, new services, you know, into, into uh, Port, Mo Port Moresby as a destination. You know, yeah, uh, it's just part of the resource boom that PNG, you know, uh, has you know uh, over the years and all the major impact project that is going to come on, you know, will certainly help uh, uh, our investment in this uh, uh, in this area. Yeah. 
Located near the city's mega mall, Vision City, this luxury facility will contain more than what meets the eye. With 438 luxurious guest rooms and suites and 66 dual key apartments, the establishment will cater for short, medium and long-term stays. A podium floor will sit on top of the building containing a rooftop garden. and a lagoon-style designer swimming pool, creating a tranquil touch to the eye and the mind. World-class facilities will make up the business center, including meeting and boardrooms for small gatherings and a 1,200 capacity ballroom and function center. The executive lounge will be on the 17th floor, offering 1,000 square meters of space that combines business and leisure, overlooking Waigani. And like any luxury five-star hotel, a presidential suite will stand as the facility's icon, an exclusive space for VIPs set on the highest floor featuring a dividable connecting junior suite. The design of the world-class facility will use latest technology in ecologically efficient materials, low-energy lighting and energy-saving heating and cooling design. Put all these together and you come up with an outstanding level of comfort never seen here before. RH Group is confident the facility will be completed by 2015, an ideal time for investment as the country plays host to the 15th Pacific Games. Uh, of course, uh, we we uh, we hope to get it completed as soon as possible. So, we yeah, are uh, looking at uh, 2015, where the the, the construction would uh, will finish. Yeah. Meanwhile, this major investment doesn't stop here in the capital. A similar initiative will be rolled out to lay the country's industrial hub. Uh, this is only a, a starting point for us. We, you know, we are looking at a uh, project like this, not only in Pomosby, but in other major uh, cities. You know, uh, the next uh, uh, place that we are thinking of uh, com contemplating a similar model, business model of this project, is in Leh. So, you know, this is just the starting point for our age. Yes. Now, what lies ahead for hoteliers? A story given an insight into the operational outlook for some of the major players when we come back. We visited some of the big boys in the hotel industry in Port Moresby in an attempt to shed light on what drives them, what's keeping them going, and what they have in store. Here's Hannah Aria with that story. The hospitality industry has experienced an intense growth. Hotel infrastructure seemed to spread across the length and width of the capital city. The construction phase of the largest LNG project in the Pacific is almost entirely a major influence on this scenario. The direct result of the boom in the hotel-motel accommodation is the sudden demand to cater for project workforce and business partners that are taking an interest in the country's growing economy. And the occupancy in most of these places are mostly business users. So right now, we have more corporate personnel than tourists traveling into and out of PNG. A few years ago, uh, all the hotels and the main centers in PNG were virtually 100% occupied, uh, which is a very unusual thing and it was a very... Um, appealing situation for those who are providing rooms and they were to a large extent able to charge the prices that they uh, they liked. Hoteliers uh, recognized that that was probably going to be uh, a short-lived situation. They wouldn't be able to enjoy that uh, f forever. It's obviously was getting very cost f costly for the users, but uh, it did provide uh, good revenue for those organizations. So we have seen, as you say, a, uh, a lot of new hotels going in, both the premium end hotels um, and a lot of uh, 
lower and middle cost guest houses that have been put in uh, all around Port Moresby and Ley and some of the other centres uh, in the country. In Port Moresby, the La Mana Hotel and Ponderosa have raised their rates in the last two years with their standard rooms being the most sought after. While the Gateway Hotel lowered their rates for their premier class rooms, they've not changed their rates for all other types of rooms. The Way In Hotel has not changed their rates as well. There has been a growing number of premium end hotels sparking the emergence of several lower and mid-class motels and guest houses being put all around Port Moresby, Ley and other centers around the country. Some are even putting in additional accommodation and introducing new conveniences. The steamships trading company is spending 200 million kina on its Grand Papua Hotel and is also planning to expand the Melanesian Hotel in Ley. The Ella Beach and Gateway Hotels are also undergoing improvements. All are part of the Coral Sea chain under STC. Award winner Airways Hotel is expanding its dining facilities with parents' company the Lamana Group announcing plans to build a Jack Nicklaus designed championship golf course near the Jackson's International Airport. Now, business is about taking risks, security, asset insurance, creating a separate budget when Mother Nature decides to knock on your door. Even a change of government, where policies tend to change, can be a time consuming and expensive exercise. This is where preparation comes into play. Forecasting your off peak and peak times on your business calendar. With businesses in PNG at its peak, the INA expects stronger competition between providers as some newer hotels enter the PNG market. This means cheaper prices in hotels and guest houses. And when this peak reclines, even more rooms to fill up for lesser than. The end result is that the occupancy rates in hotels has been coming down and also that hotels that would have liked to have been putting prices up uh, have been withholding them and in some keeping the prices lower than the rates but that doesn't mean uh, and what you also find is that a lot of hotels are almost a bargaining rates so some users are able to negotiate much uh, cheaper prices from those hotels than others or, or say okay we'll move somewhere else um, so over the course of the next period of time we're going to see several new uh, further hotels hoteliers enjoyed a steady level of income generation from high room rates in 2012 with the expectation of a decline in business activity predicted in 2013 onward some hotel motel facilities will have to offer rooms for lesser rates. Some of them will eventually close down. But it's not all bad news for users. Tourists and other local travelers and holidayers are able to now negotiate a price for hotel accommodation. That's the nature of business. But, uh, but there is more competition from the consumer's point of view. Um, the benefits are not showing that much yet. But uh, over the course of time, um, it's likely that, that benefits will, will come. People can choose more but where they're going to stay and they, can, uh, and they can negotiate prices or they, can f they may find that the prices are, are actually coming down. And to some extent, that same situation is reflected in the housing market. More stories into the hotel and restaurant business. Stay tuned for the newest addition to the family, the Grand Papua. If you've just joined us, we're talking to the big boys of the hotel business. This is a very competitive market where each player is trying to redefine what five-star accommodation means and each brand has its own touch. One of the newbies is the Grand Papua Hotel, which stands in the heart of the CBD on a piece of land that used to house the Papuan Hotel, which was the place where nationals in their early days used to hang out. This was during the pre- and post-independence era, after it got burned down, it stayed vacant until two years ago. Here's a glimpse of what the Grand Papua offers. Hotels. To an entrepreneur, it seems like a business. 
to a seasoned businessman, it's an investment. An investment in culture and history, in diversity and service. An investment in catering for a wide selection of demand that may be more evident in today's environment than it was in the last decade alone. Business PNG visited the exclusive Grand Papua Hotel in Port Moresby just to get a glimpse of how service is the number one investment in the hospitality industry. Steamships Trading Company, owner of the Coral Sea Hotel chain, wanted to do something different, a grand way of entering the rapidly advancing multi-billion kina hospitality industry in PNG. I asked a few questions to Mr. Alex Wilson, the general manager of the Grand Papua Hotel. He revealed some basic traits of the hotel industry, one of which was how to keep the quality of service where reinvention is key. And to a passionate hotelier, it's all about capturing the natural desires of a human being. So, so what does the Grand Papua give its clients? We've got a beautiful investment, we've got a beautiful product, um, and we'd love to show you all this and also our viewers. In regards to our product, we have, as an example, our 15th floor. Just on our 15th floor, we have a fantastic gymnasium. We have an executive boardroom. We have an executive lounge. We've got a Skyping room. All these are the services that what the clients want. Um, but paramount, though, in saying that, paramount is security. That's a very important component for why people travel to PNG. So, sir, can you explain the type of demand there is out there and how you strategize your marketing to meet this uh, demand? We have our own business models. I'm sure that our competitors have their own business models in how to market themselves towards that demand. I mean, for us at the end of the day, as per the earlier question, is how to actually capitalize on that demand. For us, is identifying what our core business is, and that is service. That is our people, the skills, you know, the technical skills, the know-how, how to do things well. Not only do it, but do it very well. And Papua New Guineans have the capacity to deliver that. And that's the thing. It, it, it's great that we can go out and be market things, but we also need to deliver what we market. And I think for us, our core business is saying, okay, we have a great product, let's make sure that when we go and market ourselves, whether it's through different mediums or like today, be able that when the client arrives, the experience starts from there. And that's important for us because that is a marketing within itself. That's a marketing within itself. Because if that fails, it doesn't matter what investment you put into your marketing strategies, or your marketing model, it'll fail. So if you can tell me the challenges involved in running a, a hotel. Ten years ago, we had half as many hotels. Now we've got twice as many hotels. But has the capacity dropped? The capacity is there. It's still there. So competition is good. It's only a matter of how we strategize, what business models we use to actually overdo the, or to actually outsmart the, the competition in the marketplace, whether it is in packages or using your strengths, as I said earlier, you know, fully utilizing our strengths, and that is mainly what we have, our skill sets, all that sort of stuff. I mean, one of the biggest challenges I told, I keep repeating to myself is, um, is service. Yeah, that's, a, that's a tough one. And I think in regards to competition, at the end of the day, you are only competing against yourself. Because if you have a great product and you provide the service that reflects that product and your price is right, do not worry about the competition. People will turn up at your door. So it's expected that business will go into a slope in the next uh, one or two years. What are you planning in uh, compensating for that? For us, um, there's a lot of different models you could use. And for us, most importantly, for, for us, that we need to actually always stay informed with what our owners want. We will always try and stay informed with what our customers want. And that's important. And then from there, we design or construct the strategies to try and, I, I suppose, counter 
the, the southward um, slope, as you, uh, uh, arrow, as you were saying. And that's important for us. We need to look at that. And, and we've done that. We've already prepared certain strategies to counter that. Um, and one of the key things is that we're building our relationships. We're trying to uh, build partnership programs in regards to key stakeholders. We, we're trying to work very closely with key companies, uh, both here domestically and internationally. We're trying to really revisit some of our OTAs, as an example, our online travel agents, making sure that we are in the forefront of the uh, of their selling uh, programs. We also try to look at social media in regards to what we do. So these are all strategies to try and actually counter any slope. But in saying that, we also, I suppose, looking at opportunities and windows of opportunities of how we can actually um, look at different segments of the business. And uh, you know, we both know that. LNG will probably plateau the next 12 to 18 months. That's fine. But there are other businesses also in town. You know, there's the infrastructure and development uh, sector that we can capitalize on. You know, and we hope to, we started some programs, we hope to target that also. The 220 million Kina five-star hotel boasts of an executive club, a boardroom with telemedia conferencing, and a spa and salon. But something most people want is just simply privacy. And 16 stories down to ground level, you find a small reminder of what it may mean to be welcomed into a home away from home. The restaurant business, that's next. The boom in the hotel business is evident, the recent ones established under the five-star category. And with the growing business comes restaurants, designed to satisfy the palates of a very diverse city with their many dishes. Hena Aria features two of these popular restaurants. Um, the demand here is a little bit different from a restaurant that, let's say, it's set in outside of a hotel. Because we are a hotel, we do have a lot of guests who stay for a long period of time. So sometimes we have to make sure that we have a big variety of products. So how we will tackle that is by providing specials on a daily basis and just having a menu that's incorporating everything that a customer could want, not just the Indian food, but also to provide the regular stuff. Um, besides the restaurant and, of course, bringing in guests to come and sit and eat within, we also do a lot of outside catering. Um, so for people who have functions or parties or cocktail parties, whether it's finger foods or full meals or buffets, um, we definitely cater to those as well. Uh, 
I'd say one of the biggest challenges nowadays is probably costing. Um, trying to still provide quality food but at a good price. Um, it becomes a challenge sometimes because sometimes in, in PNG it's difficult to get, especially in Port Moresby, to get certain items. For instance, fresh produce. Um, yes, PAU is wonderful for, for that, but there's also a lot of items that we can't get locally. So we are forced to bring them in, let's say from the Highlands or even from overseas. So managing the costing and the everyday purchasing tends to be a little bit of a difficulty. We have a lot of local traders who come in for with potatoes, the cow cow, all of the green vegetables, the tomatoes. So they're they're all bought locally. Where we do need to get imported product is, um, for example, lamb. Uh, no lamb, no, no industry for sheep in PNG yet. Hopefully, the, the agricultural minister might be watching, and we can work that. Um, uh, our dairy products, obviously, there's no dairy industry, so we need to import those. So. It, we only import what we uh, what we are unable to buy locally, um, or that we worry that we can't get consistently locally, we, we, which is a bit of a problem sometimes. For us here at the hotel, it's a vital part of our business. Um, we obviously have our beds. Um, but of course, when we have 150, 200 people in our hotel, we need to feed them. So the, uh, the coffee house restaurant here at the Holland Inn is, is integral to the success of our, of our business as a hotel. A premium class room with cable TV like this here at the Holiday Inn goes for about 700 kina plus GST. But when business is slow, it can go as low as 500 kina. And that's all we have lined up for this edition. And for those who'd like to watch the program again, or any of the previous editions for that matter, they can be accessed online through the web address now shown on your screen. And for more information about the program, or queries and suggestions you'd like to share with us, do send them through to businesspng at mtv.com.pg. I'm Fesis Magna. see you next Tuesday.